What's up, everyone? I'm Owen Poindexter, senior writer with Front Office Sports. Thank you so much again for joining us here at the newsroom. If you had asked 100 people, say, two years ago, what is pickleball? You would probably get, I don't know, between 99 and 100 times. Now it's everywhere you look. If you walk past a public park, good chance you're going to see pickleball. It's starting to get more and more into media on YouTube and TikTok and other spots. And today we are talking to someone who has been at the center of the pickleball media world and the center of the pickleball world since this phenomenon really took off. So we're going to dive right into that right after this. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot-com crash, housing crash, and the roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain, it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? The answer, NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% say they improved their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. What are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash the newsroom right now. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. All right, let's get into it. Um, very happy to have Doug Greenberg, writer at FOS, uh, along for the ride. How's it going, Doug? I'm doing well, Owen. Uh, it's good to be here. Good to be back uh, at work. Um, some people may not know this, but I got married a few weeks ago. So, yeah, good to be back. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I think you traveled far and wide for the, the honeymoon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I went out to California for the wedding, and then we went out to, uh, I went to Greece for the honeymoon. So, you know, yeah. flash the heart, flash the hardware across the Mediterranean, that kind of thing. That's so right. it was great. It yeah. was wonderful. Good. Yeah, yeah, it could do worse on those locations. Yeah, it could be worse. So, yeah. yeah, welcome back and congrats. Thank you. And we have our first uh, non-front office sports guest here on the newsroom. Welcome, Thomas Shields. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. I didn't realize I was the first non, non-FOS employee to uh, hop on the pod. Yeah, yeah. No, when this thing blows up and is like the, the spot everyone goes for their sports business commentary, you can say you were the first. Uh, Thomas is, is the founder of the... So oh, sorry. That, I was just, does that get me any equity, or um, you know, we'll we'll have to talk to the higher ups. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. why not? You can get back you know. to me. Get back to me yeah. on that. Yeah. Equity in the podcast, not the. Yeah, company. there you go. I'll, I'll take yeah. equity the whole thing. Yeah. All right, <laughs> maybe we could do a swap. Um, and speaking of that, Thomas is the founder of the Dink and Upswing Sports. The Dink is a pickleball-focused publication, and we will be talking about the pickleball phenomenon today. Uh, first, Thomas, I just want to get to know you a little bit better. So what were you doing yeah. before you are a, a pickleball media personality? Uh, well, I don't know if I'm a personality. I'm trying not to be. Uh, but uh, I was in investment banking, and then I worked for a startup in Manhattan for, for two years. It was like a software company. And while I was there, I just kind of started writing a newsletter on the side. And um, yeah, pickleball has grown so much. We've just been riding the wave ever since. That was about two years ago. Yeah, two, okay. two years next month. So, and, and what part of you said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a pickleball newsletter. How did that even start to be a thing? Yeah, it's a hell of a question. I, uh, I was actually a fan of this one podcast. It was just kind of like spitball business ideas. And I was like, you know, I want to start my own company. What could I do on the side while I'm working full time? Because I liked my job. It was a cool job, fast growing company. Um, how can I like spin up a, a business on the side, maybe like sell it within a year? That was kind of my goal. So I was like, ah, oh, newsletter business seems, seems like a good idea. I'm a decent writer. Uh, and my family was obsessed with pickleball. My grandparents played it every day. My dad and, you know, I come from a tennis family. Um, my aunts, my uncles, everybody had transitioned to, to pickleball because uh, tennis is too, too tough on the body, particularly when you get older. And I was like, all right, well, pickleball seems to be like an interesting topic. Nobody's really writing about it. Let me, let me start writing a newsletter on that. And uh, as soon as I started putting content out there, it was very apparent that there was a real appetite and a lack of good content in the space. So we were able to get a lot of traction really quickly and it's just grown since, since then. 
Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned your grandparents, your aunt and uncle. <laughs> One of the things that seems to be unique about the pickleball rise is that mm-hmm. it is it is an age diverse one. Um, there's certainly a lot of young people playing, but it also yeah. appeals to to the older crowd as well. Um, so yeah, and, sure. and let's just jump into it. What's going on? Why is pickleball the <laughs> the hot thing right now? Yeah, well, I I mean back to your, the point you just made, like it it really was like a a boomer and older sport, primarily played in retirement communities. Uh, I mean, it was it was founded in in 1965, right? So it's it's had a long life. the 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 recent surge, I would say, started maybe like two and a half years ago, and that's when it started to trickle down into these younger demos. And now millennials are getting a hold of it, and you know we're seeing even more traction on our our TikTok, which has like 100,000 followers. So Gen Z is now like, okay, what is what is going on? Um, but Really, I think it's just like, okay, one, it's, it's super accessible, right? So what do, you, what do you need to play pickleball? Well, you need uh, like a hard surface, some chalk, a net, paddles, and a ball. And you can go out there and you can play and you can have fun the first time. The learning curve is nominal. Like you can go and if you do have like a, a racket sports background, you're probably going to be decent at pickleball the first time you ever play. Other sports, like if you think about tennis, like what happens when you go on a tennis court for the first time? You, you can't even hit the ball over the net unless it's like, you know, some big sky ball. And I would say that's pretty similar for, for most sports. Like pickleball, you don't really have to have any sort of athletic background. If you do, it helps. But you can go and, and be decent the first time you, you ever play. Um, so I, I think that's th- those two things, in my mind, are really what's, what's driving the growth. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's just a way to like, get back out and like be competitive and and do something that's healthy for you that isn't like you know getting on a treadmill or or something else that that people don't want to do i mean and i'll I'll jump in here too and i just want to kind of ask about this as well it's like it, it almost you know you mentioned how it's it's gotten kind of popular on tiktok it's gotten just you know so would you say that a big part of it is just kind of not just that everybody plays it but the internet has kind of helped like spread the word of mouth whereas like you know, it was founded in 1965. There was really no way for people to necessarily talk about it before, but now there's kind of an easier way to, to kind of get the message across. I I think from the outside looking in, it looks like the internet is just like this big pickleball propaganda machine. (laughs) And that's, what's driving the growth, but it's not like the participation is, is driving the growth. Um, the, the amount of people playing it's, it's, it's skyrocketing. And the amount of courts popping up. I mean, you guys reported it's like there's 66 new places to play in the U.S. every day. And those are like registered places, right? That's not including the backyard courts, the driveway courts, the, the street courts. Um, participation. People are it's, – it's just like spreading like wildfire. And that is what's driven this sort of like mainstream popularity. And now all this money, all this smart money trying to capitalize on it by you know, launching Major League Pickleball – uh, getting the pro pickleball associate, trying to create like this, this new professional sport. And then of course, getting like Tom Brady and LeBron James to come buy a team. So the participation is, is what's really driving this. And now everybody is it's like, because the participation is taking off like it is, it's undeniable and it's demanding attention, external attention and external investment, which is why now we're all hearing about it. Even if you aren't in the pickleball world, You've probably heard about pickleball now, whereas a year ago, you'd be like, what the hell is pickleball? Like, what is this weird name sport and why are people playing it, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, mean j- sorry. And just the last thing I want to add there is just like it's – I mean, it's the passion, right? Like it's so crazy. Like oh, keep, for, sure. for, some, for whatever reason, like there's something about the sport that like gets people so passionate about it. Like they're just like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, I love it so much. And, yeah, it, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, I've, I've only played I think once or twice and – yeah, like, I, I don't know what it is. Like, it's something about it just, like, gets people going. It's it's addicting. Yeah. It's, it, it like, it really pulls you back. I think it, going back to the first point, like, you can go out and play for the first time and have a really good time. And uh, a lot of other activities, they just, they just aren't like that. I would compare it to, like, uh, golf where, all right, you go out and you play golf with your buddies and you're, you're probably not that good. But every once in a while, you hit that shot and it lands on the green, you go, oh, you know, maybe if I just practiced a little bit, I'd be good. It's like that on steroids. 
you go out on the pickleball court, you're like, oh, I could be good at this. And you're improving at this rapid pace. You're getting this, this like positive feedback and it, and it just draws you, it like pulls you in. And uh, so I, I think that's like a really appealing aspect for, for most people. And I think you don't get that with too many uh, competitive activities, because especially no. because they're competitive. People like want to get better. And by the time you're coming yeah. in, like the people who are showing you how to play are just like so much better than you. And like, yeah, with yeah. tennis, like you can barely yeah, get the ball over the net. And like once you do, it's just going to get smashed back if you're playing with anyone who's like got some experience. Um, and that's true of like, yeah, most casual sports. If you think about the sports you see walking around, at least for me, it's like basketball, tennis, and now pickleball as of, you know, yeah. a year ish ago. And, and yeah, basketball, you can like kind of have fun if you're just goofing around, but yeah, it's hard to make a basket if you don't ever play. Yeah. And, um, and even things like ping pong, it's like, you know, first you need the table, but also like you're constantly going to be hitting it away. So yeah, I can definitely see the, like, yeah, the ease of picking it up. Um, seems to be be pretty key here. Um, in terms of the, well, uh, you mentioned those leagues, yeah. the the major league pickleball. So there's three, right? Three leagues that are trying to like be yeah. the pickleball league. So major league mm -hmm. pickleball association of professional pickleball players is that? <laughs> and it's a lot of it's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of A's and P's, um, and I'm like, yeah, so <laughs> it's like a, a, a P -P? P -P -A. Yeah, A P P and P P A. And I was looking at my notes, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to get it right if I if I try to remember yeah. offhand what, what all those A's and B's yeah, yeah, stand right. for. Um, so yeah, what's what's the deal with all these? Is one of them like looks like it's going to be the big one, or is it still mm -hmm. like a, a real fight? Yeah, so the Pro Pickleball Association is like the premier tour, and Major League Pickleball is like the premier league, and they're approaching it from different angles. So Major League Pickleball is more of a team event, um, and then Pro Pickleball Association, while you would compete. Uh, on a, a team of two and like mixed doubles or doubles. Um, there's also singles and it's more of like an individualized, uh, but it's more like the PGA tour, the pro pickleball association is. Whereas major league pickleball, it's like, you know, they tour um, like the entity tours, but it's these league events you're playing on the same team in each one. Uh, and it's more of, I think they're more just trying to replicate like a, a major league soccer or like a, an NFL. Um, but, you know, I, I think both are still iterating and figuring out, you know, how exactly to structure these events and how the point system works and, you know, how to make like some tournaments bigger than others. And so uh, I think there's still a lot of evolution um, in the kind of the roadmap. But, uh, yeah, I would say like PPA, MLP, those are kind of like the premier organizations. APP is also a respected tour. A lot of great talent plays on that. Um, but they're also more focused on the amateur side. So when you go to the APP, it's like there's equal focus on, you know, you can go as an amateur and uh, compete and have a great time. The Pro Pickleball Association does that too, but I think the APP is just a little more like focused on the amateur versus the pros, whereas PPA is like, we want to be the next pro sport. So I, I guess that leads to a question as well is, do you think that, at some point there's going to be some kind of consolidation like that one one of them is going to beat out the other two and and there's or like do you think yeah. like only one can survive can do you think multiple can survive yeah it's a loaded question like if you so if you were to ask me this question every month over the past 12 months i'd have a different answer for you uh there are rumblings that the the ppa and mlp are gonna start working together more they were in this like fierce competition that was like it, there was like a lot of animosity and uh, they really weren't getting along they were trying to out compete each other and they were putting more prize money and you know both claiming they're the best i think there is going to be not consolidation but they're going to start working together more and i think that's going to serve to benefit uh pickleball as a pro sport generally i'm also curious how that is um affecting your world as a media person in the pickleball space when you write about this stuff um yeah. and yeah do, do, do media do podcasts about the different leagues are you getting like any pushback any are there like fans of one that'll always like rise up yep. in your comment section or anything like yeah, how is yeah, it how are you sure. interacting with this whole ecosystem yeah there's definitely like loyalists for for both organizations and um there's also like opponents of those organizations as well so um i don't know we just try and like 
call it as we see it. I, I, um, I'm a fan of anybody who's trying to grow the sport. We are as a, as a company, a fan of anybody who's trying to grow the sport. Um, so, you know, we just try and report and be unbiased. Uh, but at the same time, no matter what we say, we'll probably get accused of being biased toward one or the other. If we say like a positive or a negative thing, and that's just the way the internet works. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's about what I would expect. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, so and these, these tournaments are starting to like put up some decent money in terms of, I mean, you're mm -hmm. like probably not going to make your living winning pickleball tournaments unless you're, you know, a top whatever yeah. 20 player, let's say. Um, and you can correct me on that if it's top 20, top 10, top a hundred, um, yeah. but it, it's starting to become more of a viable path potentially if you are among the, the creme de la creme of pickleball players. Yeah. Yeah. That has to happen. Uh, it's improving. It's still not quite there. Uh, major league pickleball is now, they, they now have like the biggest payout. So this past weekend was major league pickleball Columbus. It was the last event of the year. Um, and the winning team split a uh, hundred grand. So each of the four players on that team each made 25 grand for, you know, uh, a weekend of work, which is a far cry from what it was, which is where like, you know, it'd be like, XYZ won the US Open and they'd have one of these big like massive checks and you know they take the picture and then you'd look at like the dollar amount it was like 250 bucks it's like what are we doing here uh, so these guys were all like if you wanted to compete on the pro tour like you were going to lose money and you had to just understand that uh, now we're moving toward higher payouts so higher earnings for the winners higher appearance fees um, and these players are starting to get more sponsorship dollars but for the most part, when you look around the pro landscape, every single one of these top pros, top 100, uh, is is also teaching clinics. Uh, they're putting, they're trying. More and more of them are trying to put out content. Uh, they are trying to figure out other ways to monetize because right now, you can't just show up to the events and hope that that's going to like pay you a decent salary or um, you know earn you a decent income for that year. So. Players still need to be creative, and they also need to play in a lot of events. And so I, I think that lends to, like, they're grinding. Like, they're really, really grinding out there. Um, I think there were over 50 events, pro events this year, which means basically, like, if you are, like, a real hustler, you, as a pro, you could be playing every single weekend. And that's that's a big strain on your body. So um, I think that kind of travel, to too, right? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be exhausting, right? So last year, we, in 2021, we drove a van from tournament to tournament. Um, and it was a great way to, like, get our brand out there and, like, cover the sport. But even just as someone not even competing, I did compete a little bit, but for the most part didn't. And I was just covering the sport. I mean, that was exhausting. So I can't imagine if you're also playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and if you have a successful Thursday, Friday, Saturday, also on Championship Sunday, that's a grind. Um, and in turn, so you, you've, you've been seeing the sport up close for a little while. Can you give me a sense of the culture around pickleball? I, I feel like yeah. it's, it's like from my like very limited point of view, I feel like it's like a little slice of everything. There's like, uh, you know, like there's kind of this like weird celebrity element to it, you know, now like Tom Brady's in LeBron James is in got Gary mm -hmm. Vaynerchuk, Drew Brees. There's some names that get name checked around pickleball. Uh, but each of those kind of is bringing a little bit of a different energy. And then there's like the more like, you know, anyone can pick it up. It's a casual sport. It's a little bit goofy and it's branding. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Is there a pickleball culture? Is it just like a big mishmash of everything? Let's talk about that. Yeah, there's definitely a pickleball culture. It's it's um, it's still pretty intimate. Like it's a, it's a small community. Everybody knows everybody. Um and uh, the, I mean, really, like if you're if you're an outsider looking to invest in pickleball, the bigger market opportunity is the casual player who, you know, it it's getting better, but probably can't even name, you know, the the, the pro players. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's like kind of I would say like two cultures. It's like one is like the casual player go play on the weekends with your buddies or like weekdays and you don't really follow the pro tour. And then there's the people on the inside who are like fanatical and completely obsessed and identify with the pickleball lifestyle. So it's sort of like, um, there's a, there's like 
an interesting dynamic between those two groups. And, and I think we're trying to us and all these pro, you know, all these different organizations are trying to bring in those, those casual players into our world of like, you know, following the pro tours and caring and identifying with the sport. Yeah. Because that's kind of what I've like, what I'm thinking of, like, for example, like I, you know, like in my in-laws neighborhood, right? Like there's like all these parents and their kids and they all love playing pickleball. Like they play it in the cul-de-sac and all that stuff. Um, and I don't know, like, I, I have a feeling if I went up to them and asked them like, you know, oh yeah, like how, how do you think the pickleball tournament went this past weekend? They'd be like, what pickleball tournament, you know, like they just wouldn't know. So yeah, I mean, it's, you're, it's, it's a good point to be like, there's a, there's this like distinct difference between like, yeah, like playing this recreational sport. Um, you know, it's almost like saying to somebody like, uh, you know, have, did you watch like the, the tetherball tournament the other day? Right. Like, you know, something that someone just like plays casually and maybe can't even imagine that there is a professional aspect to it. Yeah. I mean, we're doing our best to like indoctrinate people. <laughs> so, you know, we like, we, we put out two issues of our newsletter per week. We're moving to three here soon, but we try and, you know, make it appealing to both the casual fan who's just trying to improve their game and the people who follow the, the the pro tour so like you know we report on both the latest happenings across major league pickleball the pro pickleball association and the app and uh, also just sort of the hey make these adjustments in your game to uh, play better the next time you're out there and uh, so we're trying to like you know use the the casual appeal as like a funnel to bring people into the pro sport and I think a lot of the other organizations are thinking that way as well. In terms of the, the money that's coming into these tournaments, jumping that back to that for a sec, is that, you know, can these tournaments put up, you know, $60,000, $100,000 and make money? Or are, is that more of an investment, a long-term investment uh, in the growth of the, the tournament, the growth of the game? Um, but they're not seeing that money from, I don't know, sponsors, attendees, wherever else it's coming from. The organizations themselves or like the, the sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. The, or whoever's putting up that, that hundred K for, uh, yeah. for the biggest tournaments. Well, you could just think of it like any startup, right? Like I think, um, you know, they're, they're like, I know that some of the organizations were, are losing money every time they do an event, but they're building something right They're They're betting on the future. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's just like building a, a startup when you're early in a market. Uh, the difference is like in this, you're, you're, I mean, you're really trying to, these organizations are really trying to create the market at the same time. Uh, so that's definitely uh, a challenge, but you have to continue to grow the sport so that more people will watch so that you can demand higher CPMs for those advertising for, for the, for the advertisers and then you can pay the players more and then the product gets better because there's better talent and there's a better product on the court so more people watch and then we create this flywheel right i mean that's what everybody's trying to solve for right now but i i, I think like we still have a long way to go um like there, there aren't enough people watching the pro game right now and uh they need to they need to focus on 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 growing it from a, a spectator standpoint the participation is not in question. It's growing like nothing we've ever seen. The spectator sport, the pro sport, people watching it, making it something that people tune into every weekend, uh, that's, that's still a question mark, and, and that's what everybody's focused on, on improving right now. And, and what are we looking at in terms of like viewership and also where is it being shown? I think I saw CBS has a, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, uh, what are the, yeah, what, what, what are we looking at in terms of media and, and viewership? Most people are just tuning in like via YouTube right now, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is unique. Most pro sports aren't like that, but again, it's, it's in its infancy. Uh, Tennis channel is now broadcasting the pro pickleball association. CBS has broadcast the pro pickleball association and major league pickleball and, um, I think when you do see right now, when you do see these like bigger entities like an ESPN or a CBS or Fox or whatever broadcasting it, I do think that there's still, and this is speculation on my part, right? So take it for what it's worth. Um, but I do think they're still like play, paying, like the organizations are paying for that airtime. Mm -hmm. 
Right, and that, that is kind of the natural cycle, right? You 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 pay for coverage until the coverage yeah. pays you. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something I'm interested in too, and we touched on this a little bit, but going back to kind of like that in investment part of this, and people who are investing in the future, you know, you have all these celebrities uh, who have started to buy into it. Uh, Tom Brady was obviously the big one. Uh, Kim Cloisters got in with him um, for that. And you got Drew Brees and LeBron James and Kevin Love and Draymond Green and, you know, like all of these pro pro athletes who I'm going to venture a guess and say that they play pickleball in their spare time, um, like maybe in the off season. You never know. Or they just think of it as a good yeah. investment opportunity. But, I mean, either right. way, yeah. you know, like – what does that like celebrity aspect of the whole thing bring to this, you know, money wise, notoriety wise, that kind of thing? I think it just helps from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. right? It it just brings it makes people say, wait, what's happening here? And it, it helps like, you know, get more people to just like tune in. And, uh, you know, hopefully that has kind of like a, a, a trickle down effect. Um, but, uh, you know, Right now, it's just it's just good to associate big names with this thing to continue to to um, grow the hype train, uh, which is you know what it needs. But I, I think of it as just like marketing right now to try and get more people to tune in. And before we wrap, I want to give you a minute or two to talk about your other venture, Upswing Sports, which, yep. from my understanding, is looking for sports on the upswing, much like pickleball. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, <laughs> nice. what is Upswing Sports, and what sports yeah. are on the upswing? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, we want to basically like find more pickleballs of the world. So my favorite ones right now that I think are going to have like a big future are uh, disc golf. Uh, Padel is a really interesting one. I think one that people Sorry, aren't really talking Padel. Padel. Oh, you got to look it up. It's absurd. Okay. It's it's um, it's kind of doing what pickleball is doing in the U.S. but everywhere else in the world. It's really big in like Brazil, um, Spain, uh, and it's like. You're in, I mean, do you know like what a racquetball or a squash court looks like? It's like a glass yeah, case. Yeah. Um, so it's like that, but you know, it's more, but it's like you take a pickleball court and you put it inside a glass case. Uh, and it's, I don't know. I, I mean, you really just have to look it up. It's just another paddle yeah. sport. Um, but it's, it's growing really, really aggressively abroad. And I think it's kind of like the next big thing to pop behind pickleball here within the, you, the US. you know, what's funny. So this is, it's, yeah. it's sometimes known as paddle tennis. Am I right? Or is that, or is it different than paddle tennis? That's a problem. It's like, they need to change the name because everybody gets confused. It's like, there's paddle tennis, platform tennis, pop tennis, padel. And, um, you know, so like you, you're trying to figure out like when somebody brings it up, you're like, wait, which one are you talking about? Okay. So gotcha. Because I, cause I, I'm I, like, I've been looking up, I'm looking at pictures of padel and, I'm seeing they play in these yeah. like, yeah, these like little cage courts kind of thing. And I actually have a friend who played mm -hmm. tennis in high school who has played this before and he's like obsessed with it. So that's so funny that you should bring it up. So I, act yeah. I actually do know somebody who plays this. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's also like just really like the highlights. If you just go on like TikTok or Instagram or whatever, like type in hashtag Padel and look at like the top clips. Nice. It's absurd. You can leave, you can like leave the glass case. And like play the ball back into the court so there's like no out of bounds and then you can reach over to the opponent's side like of the net and hit it like hit it like back into the net right so it's weird the way the the territory works but yeah going back to your original question like we're just trying to identify what sports are on the the upswing and build media properties around them uh, because when they aren't like a big four sport, they tend to get neglected, undercovered. And, uh, you know, there's really passionate fan bases built around these sports. So I think we can go do exactly what we did in Pickleball and build really great media properties, which is, you know, all sorts of great social media, uh, newsletters, podcasts, blogs, and uh, really just build like a, a, a cool, a cool uh, sports media company that focuses on these sports that um, you know, maybe just aren't getting the, the attention they, they deserve right now. Yeah. You mentioned disc golf. That was my pandemic sport where like the first time I yeah. played, I, I sucked. I was, I was really, really bad. Um, yeah. but, um, the second time I was still bad, but I was like, not like embarrassingly, frustratingly terrible. I was like, and like, now I'm like, you know, somewhere between bad and okay. Like I can, yeah. I can go out and like, you know, for the first, like, 
you know, seven holes, like maybe keep up with my friend who's like clearly better than me, uh, depending on the day. So yeah, and it's one where yeah, you can you can get better, you get better pretty quickly. Um, you don't need a lot, you basically just need a disc and a course. Um, you know, the, the course is, is an obstacle, but it's not like golf where there's a whole like, you, know, you got to get your tee time, you got to get your clubs, you get it's like a whole thing. And it ends up costing like $8,000 by the time you want to get like semi serious yeah. about it. Yeah, well, mo most people can throw a, a frisbee, right? So uh, it has that going for it. It's kind of like pickleball in that, like, okay, you can play it decently the first time you play. Whereas, like, if you go on a golf course for the first time and you hit a five iron, it's probably just going to go 90 degrees or, like, it, you're just going to take a chunk out of the ground. So there is that time you have to dedicate up front to just even being able to, like, function out there and look like, you know, not, not an embarrassment. Um, so... Yeah, I think uh, that one has a, a lot of appeal, and it seems to be growing pretty quickly right now as well. Yeah, I'm big into I'm big into disc golf. I I played it a few times before, and it was really funny because, like a month or a few months ago, I randomly started getting disc golf uh, videos on my on my Facebook feed. I have no idea how. I don't think I've ever searched for it or anything. Yeah. But I was. But then what was really yeah. funny was I found myself just like watching these highlights anyway. I was just like, well, I didn't ask for this, but I kind of like right. it anyway. So I've been watching. It's it's weirdly fun yeah. to watch as a spectator sport it's really impressive these these people who play so i i think the points like uh disc golf lends to social too like doing well on social so somebody like like people like us it's going to come on our, it's going to come across our feed because the algorithms are going to reward the fact that like if somebody posts a good disc golf highlight it like you'll you know the caption or you'll have some text on the on the video that'll be like craziest shot ever and then you have to sit there and you have to watch, right? You have to watch because it's like a, usually a big throw and it's sort of this like slow winding and then it gets to like the chain or, or whatever you call it, right? So the algorithms reward the fact that people have to spend a lot of time watching a single highlight just to figure out what happened, right? So then it, it kind of has that like virality built in. So more and more people are, are seeing that. I think like pickleball is similar in that if you do get a good highlight where it's like this fast exchange and these these hard shots and these crazy gets, it's like people are going to be like, what the hell did I just watch? And then they're going to like watch it again and again. And so um, that tends to like get shared really widely across like a TikTok or an Instagram reels or like a YouTube shorts. Um, so that's that's always like a, a nice a nice benefit. Yeah. And there is something to it being relatively new, like the next disc golf highlight you watch might be the first one you've ever seen. And, and so like, you know, it's different from you know, like watching a great, like Roger Federer tennis point, which are like amazing, but you've probably seen some of those before. If you're like in the yeah. sports world or watching a big home run, it's like, all right, right. that was awesome. But yeah, I've seen, I've seen a home run before. Uh, whereas yeah. like, yeah, a gorgeous disc golf shot. It's both like, wow, that was a great shot, but also like, what am I even watching here? Yeah, exactly. There's a degree of like, wait, what was that? I have to watch this again. Like I've never heard right, this yeah. thing before. Um, but I do think like going back to pickleball, one of the challenges is the game tends to collapse to the net and it's these short little dink shots, hence the name The Dink. Um, and it's more of like a chess match and it's very nuanced and it's strategic. And if you haven't played before, you really don't understand what you're watching and it tends to look pretty boring. And so... Pickleball is kind of fighting an uphill battle in that, like, you know, you like most of the most of the match is spent with these little like cute shots at the net, which isn't exactly exciting. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, listen, get, golf solved that. That's like one of the most boring things to watch if you've if you've never played. But somehow people are are, are starting to tune. So in, like so. a lot of the spectatorness or the appeal to spectators with pickleball is tied to the fact that, like you were saying, like like golf, like people. Who want who want to watch it are watching it because they played and they kind of like know mm -hmm. what it's all about, which it's kind of like esports too, right? right? Like you know, people really get a lot of appeal yeah. out of it because they know how difficult it is or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. You need people, like... you need people to understand what they're yeah. looking at, and, yeah. and that will help kind of further the the viewership. Yeah, and I think when you have good commentators, that can really bridge that gap. Like, I think the poker boom happened for a bunch of different reasons, but I think some of it was that ESPN found some people who were really good at talking about poker yeah. and could kind of bring you in. So and then you, like, all of a sudden think you're a poker expert. 
And uh, I actually, yeah, esports randomly the other night. I'm not uh, like a generally an esports watcher. I somehow ended up on Twitch, um, and was I saw like League of Legends championships. And the first thought in my head was like, I bet they found some people who are good at talking about League of Legends. I don't know what's going right. on, but like I am sort of like being pointed toward like what's exciting, and like I, I was able to kind of follow the action or like somehow get invested in the thing that I like didn't really know what was happening but yeah. um but yeah that can really i think be a key to like get from i sort of enjoy playing it and like i understand that like one side's winning to like feeling the excitement and the action of it yeah like personalities on the mic but then also personalities actually playing the sport uh like when you think of poker you know what was it like G like jesus like chris jesus ferguson mm -hmm. or whatever right, right. you know yeah. like everybody knows who who that guy is uh tiger is like the epitome of this right like tiger woods where he drew in just he was so electric and so good that he drew in all these outsiders and they all came in and, and then they and then they stayed right i think pickleball is still looking for those personalities that are compelling and that you want to root for and so i think that's something that everybody's trying to to figure out as well and um you know, there's all sorts of factors like how do you broadcast it? What are the camera angles? Uh, when do you slow mo? When do you cut to somebody on the sideline? Like, how do you, how do you, t how do these announcers, to your point, um, you know, explain the narrative? Explain what's happening? Explain why we care, or why we want this person to win, or you know, just as just as valuable, why we want this villain to lose? Right? Sometimes that can be really awesome. So, you know, I think pickleball is still trying to figure out. Who are the personalities that people care about or people love to hate? Yeah. We got to let you go, but uh, give us one thing to, to look for, probably in pickleball, but or maybe in the, the wider world of sports on the rise. Major League Cricket's coming. Mm. All right. Nobody's, oh, talk okay. Nobody's talking about it, but uh, you know the CEO yeah, yeah. of Microsoft just led a $110 million investment round in Major League Cricket. and. Wow. People don't realize this, but I think the U.S. is like the second biggest consumer of cricket. It's obviously massive globally, um, but now there's like some pretty impressive people with deep pockets building stadiums and trying to build out, you know, um, you know, the, the next big pro sport. So, yeah, yeah, that's not pickleball related, but that's the one I'm kind of no, take it. At, that's right? a good one. Opportunity yeah, no, I think there, isn't yeah. they're building a dedicated stadium, I want to say, in Irvine, California. Is yeah, there's a few. I know there's a big one in Dallas, Irvine. Uh -huh. um, I think uh, somewhere on the on the East Coast, but that's uh, still very much at like the the ground stages. The difference is like they're just not getting the attention that pickleball is. So maybe they should go get like Tom Brady to invest. <laughs> That'll help. Well, I mean, you know, they, they've got is it Satya Nadella is uh, so you know maybe they're on their way. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, all right, Thomas Shields, thank you so much for joining. Uh, check out the Dink. Check out Upswing Sports, and yeah, keep us posted on on what's going on. Thanks once again for joining us here on The Newsroom. We'll be coming at you with these conversations about where sports is affecting the rest of the world, the business, the culture, everything, every single week, every Thursday. So please rate us and review us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts. Also check us out on YouTube. You can see us talk. And uh, also check out our other podcasts. We've got three really excellent podcasts. Uh, in addition to The Newsroom, we have My Other Passion, where our editor-in-chief, Ernest Baker, interviews. Uh, sports figures and other executives involved in the sports world about what makes them famous, but also some things you don't know about them. And then we've got the lead off, our daily podcast, where usually Abigail Gentrip is going to be telling you the biggest stories in the sports business world. So check out the newsroom, check out the lead off, and check out my other passion, and we'll see you next week.